God bless you again. Welcome. And uh, again, my name is Dorian Baker. If you're tuning in for the first time, if you've never seen my face before, I'm one of the lead pastors here at Light Ticket Church, along with my wife, Leah Baker. Uh, we are based in Herndon, Virginia, uh, along with our uh, lovely dream team, a uh, group of believers, our family who have helped to start something we believe is great and it's a start. Uh, we're not finished yet and we are excited about what is to come. If you've been joining us the past eight weeks, we've been sharing on the gospel teaching and how uh, God has given us his good news because the gospel literally is God's good news and the gospel of God, the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, oftentimes we look at as just being about what he has done, but it is also the good news is who God is. So we started out in this series in understanding that we serve a God. We were created by God who is one, the Lord, our God. He is one. He is one God in three persons, one essence, three persons, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit. There are not three gods. We don't worship three gods. We worship one God, one essence, three persons, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. And, and from there, we went into talking about the three stories of the gospel. There's not, there are not three gospels. There's one gospel. But all three stories point to Jesus. Jesus is the hero in every story. Jesus is the hero. We, we learn about the story of grace. And the story of grace is our relationship with God. It is only through Jesus Christ that we are able to come into relationship with God. For no man comes to the Father except through Jesus. And it is because of Jesus and his shed blood. It's through his death. And he became the sacrificial lamb that was slain for us to atone for our sins. To meet the requirements of the law once for all times and for all mankind through the blood of Jesus. Jesus died on the cross and he was buried for three days. And on the third day, Jesus got up with all power by the resurrection of God. And because of his resurrection, we are also resurrected into this new life. And we have the right we have the opportunity to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And it is only through him that we are able to come back into relationship with God. We learn that identity has come to us also in the gospel, the good news of God. That our identity, the story of righteousness, our identity is righteousness. That we are not what we've done. We are not uh, the, the bad mistakes that we have made. We are who God says we are. We are the righteousness of God. The story of righteousness tells us that my identity and your identity was decided long before anybody else could decide it. It's not based on our sexual preference. It's not even based on our race or color of our skin. It's not based on our political affiliation or our economic status. It's not based on what country or region that you are from. Your identity, who you are, was determined long before any of those things existed. Your identity was determined by God. Before you were formed in your mother's belly, before your mother met your father, God decided that you are the righteousness of God. But even that identity, we cannot receive unless we first come into relationship with God. This is why you cannot try to convert or change somebody's uh, identity if they if they decide, you know what, I was born this way, but I believe I'm another way. Or if they decide that that who they are is based on their sexual preferences or if they decide that, you know what, I am not I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. I'm, I, I don't believe that there is a God or I don't believe that Jesus is God. You cannot change someone's identity. What first must happen is they must come into relationship with God. 
That's the story of grace. And when we come into relationship with God, then we can receive the identity that God has created for us. The identity of righteousness that we are right, not in doing, but we are right in being. Because you are not a human doing, you are a human being. And when God created you, he created you to be a human being for you to be right in being the righteousness of God. And then last week we talked about the story of dominion. And the story of dominion, we, we talked about the story, excuse me, the story of kingdom. Because we lost our dominion when Adam and Eve were deceived by Satan who took on the form of a serpent in the Garden of Eden. And they were the first two people uh, here on earth. And when they were deceived, they gave up or forfeited the dominion that they had, that God had given to them. And when they forfeited that dominion, they lost out. On God's destiny for them. And we lost out on God's destiny for us. What is God's destiny for us? God's destiny for us is that we would have kingdom. The story of the kingdom. And so today as we bring this to a uh, conclusion. And we've been talking about uh, the kingdom. We've been talking about the gospel. The good news of God. We understand that the kingdom is not a, a, a noun and that the people in, in the time of Jesus, when he spoke and preached about the kingdom, they understood when he said kingdom, what what he meant and that the kingdom was not a noun, a, a place or a person or a thing it was not a building. It was not a, a castle, but the kingdom that Jesus spoke about was more of a verb. It was the the rulership. The, the kingship, the kinging, the rule of God, the kingdom of God is the rule of God. And you know what I love about Jesus in his ministry, his earthly ministry, is that Jesus preached the kingdom from the time that he started his ministry. You didn't hear uh, as much Jesus preaching about the cross you didn't hear as much Jesus preaching about, uh, you know, you know, go and get all the money you can and be as prosperous as you can. You didn't hear Jesus preaching about uh, all of these material things that that we often ascribe to. Well, if, if I serve a loving God, then he's going to give me all these material things. But what do you hear Jesus preaching about over and over again? Repeatedly, he preaches about the kingdom. He preaches the kingdom, the rule of God. As a matter of fact, when the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray, what did he say? Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Our father who is in heaven, hallowed, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, period. Jesus says, your kingdom come. The kingdom of God is what Jesus preached. And if that is what Jesus preached, and if that is where Jesus focused his, his time, his energy, and in his ministry, if he, if he focused in on the kingdom as much as he did, then shouldn't we also be preaching and teaching the kingdom of God? Here in 2020, I know that there are many other things that we want to focus on. And I know that there are other topics that may be more popular because it's cool or because it's hip. You know, we want to hear about seven steps to this or 12 steps to that. We want to hear about, uh, you know, things that we can do to make ourselves better in, in our education or in our relationships with uh, with our significant other. We want to hear about how can we make more money and, and how can we have more influence? Uh, all of these things we want to hear about and all those things, while they are important and they are necessary, none of them supersede the kingdom. And this is what Jesus preached. Matthew 24, verse 14. We're going to conclude with our focus on this scripture. Matthew 24, 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. There are many other things that were mentioned leading up to Matthew 24, 14. Uh, and we've probably heard some of them as we study about the, the end times. As, as Christians or those who are, are reading, you may have even heard, even if you're not in the church, you may have heard about famines and pestilence, disease, wars, rumors of wars, blood moons, uh, all of these things that would transpire. And many times when we see these things, we begin to think, oh, you know, the end is near. The time is near. The day is, is here. 
where Jesus will return, where he where he comes back. And this time he's coming back for his church because of all of those things that we see. The truth is, all those things have been happening for years, for years and years and years. And it's part of the reason why many people uh, have prophesied or have preached and said, you know, the Lord is coming back in, in 1988 or the Lord is coming back in 2012 or the Lord is coming back in, in the year 2000. And all of these times people have put up and yet we look and we don't see him return. And what did Jesus say? No man knows the day nor the hour, but it is only my father who knows. And, and so we don't know the day that he will return, but we do know that he's coming soon. We do know that Jesus is coming soon because all of the signs, anything that needs to happen in the earth has already happened. So he literally could come right now in the middle of my sentence. He could break the, uh, every <laughs> he, he could literally break the Internet right now. God could crack the sky. Jesus could come back and, and, and the rapture could take place right now at this moment. Nothing else needs to happen. No other wars, no other diseases or famines need to happen. Um, nothing else needs to happen in order for Jesus to return. But what does Matthew 24 verse 14 tell us? Matthew 24, 14 tells us that the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, the, the, the rule of God will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. So you probably say, well, what are you saying? Why are you why do you keep repeating this scripture? I'm repeating this scripture so that you will know. That the very thing that is happening right now in the earth is that the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached into every nation. Even right now through this video, even right now as people are watching this, we have people that tune into uh, to watch these teachings from from Pakistan, from India, from from uh, from Africa. We have people who tune in to watch these teachings and the gospel of the kingdom, not just from here, but from all over. The gospel of the kingdom is being preached into all the nations and the word of God says, and then the end will come and then the end will come. And I want to be, and I believe you do too. I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of what God is doing in this hour. I want to be a part of, of preaching, of sharing, of proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Now I know it's tempting y'all. I get it. It's tempting to just be a, a, a spectator. It's tempting. I, I understand to just say, hey, I want to sit in the stands and I want to watch from the sidelines. Let y'all get in the game and, and I'll cheer you on and I'll get my pom poms out and, and say, go pastor or go prophet or go evangelist or go whatever title you put on it. But the truth of the matter is you, you, my brother, you, my sister, you are the ones that God has called to spread the good news of his kingdom. Jesus preached all throughout his ministry. Matthew 4, 23. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And wherever you see him preaching the gospel of the kingdom, what do you see following that? It says in Matthew 4, 23, healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. You see where Jesus preached the kingdom, healing followed. Look at Matthew 9, 35, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching what the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people where the gospel of the kingdom is preached. Healing follows. God has called you to preach the gospel. You might be saying, wait a minute, hold on. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a preacher. You know, I'm not an I'm not an evangelist. Is is it could that be me that I'm supposed to be preaching uh, the gospel? I'm 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 just whatever you put under that. I'm just this. I'm just that. Are you a follower of Jesus? I'm asking you a question. Are you a follower of Jesus? Are you a disciple? Because if you are a disciple, let me share with you what Jesus spoke to the disciples. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus says, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in verse 8, what followed? Again, healing followed. He says, Heal the sick, 
cleanse the lepers. He says, raise the dead, cast out demons freely. You have received freely. You are to give. Are you a follower? Are you a Jesus follower? I'm not asking you if you're a pastor. I'm not asking you if you're ordained or if you've been to theological seminary. I'm not asking you if you have a certain title in front of your name or a parking space at your church. The question is, are you a follower of Jesus? Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Are you a disciple? Because Jesus clearly speaks to his disciples and says, preach the kingdom, heal the sick. Not only that, but some of us might say, well, wait a minute, those were the 12. Of course he told them to do that because that was their assignment. Their assignment was to go and to turn the world upside down. Those were the 12 that walked with Jesus. So of course they would do that. But there were more than just the 12. And it, I mean, we see that. I mean, we see it again in Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Uh, we see it once more. I'm going to just share with you how Jesus, again, he called the 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. And again, to what? To heal the sick. Do you see the theme? Preaching the kingdom, healing the sick. You notice that Jesus gave the disciples not only power, but authority. Power and authority over demons. Do you realize that you have power and authority over demons? You have power, meaning God has enabled you. God has equipped you, but he's also not only giving you the, the equipping, but he's giving you the authority so you can sign off on it. You have the authority to cast out devils. You have the authority to speak to sickness and disease and command it to leave. That is what Jesus said. And he spoke to the disciples. But I, I, I might I hear some people in the background might be saying, wait a minute. That was the 12 disciples. But not only the 12, he also spoke to the 70. He called the 70 who were outside of the 12, which lets us know it was not just about those 12 that we read about that walked with him and that hung out with Jesus and everywhere he went. It was not just about the 12, but even to the 70 that were outside of the 12. Luke chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus spoke to the 70 and he told them to go out Preaching the kingdom, he says, he says here, Luke 10 verse 9, and heal the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. So not just the 12. You can't, if you were saying that before, you can't say that anymore. You, you cannot. If you said, well, wait a minute, that was the 12. That was back then. It was the 12 that walked with Jesus. It was, it was those brothers that were, that were with him. That those were the ones that God called to turn the world upside down, to preach the kingdom, to heal the sick, to cast out devils. Not just the 12, not just the 12. He even spoke to the 70 that were outside of the 12. And he told them, he said, preach the kingdom of God. You see it in your Bible, Luke chapter nine, verse two, preach the kingdom of God, the, the kingdom. What is that? The rule of God. It is here. The rule of God and heal the sick. He says, preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick, heal the sick. And they let them know that the kingdom of God has come near to you. Now, as we as we close this out, I, I already know you're saying or somebody might be saying, OK, that was 12. And there were 70. But what does that have to do with me? I'm not the 12. I'm not the 70. I wasn't here when Jesus was here. You know, I'm just a Christian. I believe God. I believe that Jesus is Lord, but let me just believe and let me just kind of fight my own battles on the sidelines and just try to hang on for dear life. I don't want to, you know, I, I don't see myself in this, but I want to share with you this scripture as we close this out. And it's in John chapter 17, John 17. And this is where Jesus is praying to the father. And as he is praying, Jesus prays for the 12. He, he prays for the 12, those who were with him, those he says, Father, that you gave to me. He prays for them, the 70. He's praying for them. But he also prays for you and for me. And he says this in verse number 20. He says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Not only for these, but those who will believe in me through their word. He goes on to say that they all may be one 
as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Verse 22 says, and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. And the final verse I'll read, verse 23, he says, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. So what's the fight? Have you recognized that in our nation and in our world, have you recognized that on our planet, that the ultimate fight that the devil has, has set up and he's, he's won in some cases and he's lost in some cases, is to prevent us from becoming one. It's to stop us from becoming one. One in purpose, one in God. Jesus says that let the world see that he is Lord, that the Father sent him through our oneness, through our becoming one. What is happening right now, Matthew 24, verse 14, is that the gospel of the kingdom is being preached. And while Jesus walked the earth, Jesus preached the gospel. He preached the gospel and wherever he preached the gospel, healing followed. Uh, demons were cast out. Even dead people were raised. And then he, he, he told the disciples, look, I, I gave you power and authority over, over devils. And, and they went out and they did the same. They preached the gospel and, and people were healed from sickness and disease and demons were cast out. And then he got to 70 and he told them, go out and preach the gospel of the kingdom. And what happened? People that were sick and were diseased were healed and demons were cast out. And now in Matthew 24, 4, verse 14, Jesus says... God lets us know that before the end comes, the last thing that is happening is that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached into all the nations. So what is happening right now, if you are hearing the Holy Spirit, if you are hearing what the Spirit is saying to the churches, is that God is calling you to preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom into all the earth. So that every nation will know that Jesus is Lord. Now is the time. Right now is the moment. And I want to pray this prayer with you because I do understand that there are times where you and I, we may not feel that we are where we need to be in order for us to preach the gospel, in order for us to spread the good news of the kingdom of God. We may feel like we're weak. We may feel like, you know what, I don't have it. I don't have what it takes. But you need to know that that is a lie from the pit of hell. If you are a follower of Jesus, God has called you. God has equipped you. He has given you the power and he has given you the authority for you to carry out his purpose in the earth. And we must. I don't know any other way to say it. It is the time. Now is the time. Because the end is near. The end of this time as we know it. It is near. And so I want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for all of the all of the viewers that are watching this live and that are watching this uh, at any any point that they're watching. Father, I pray that that every lie that has tried to convince them that they are not equipped or they're not ready or, or, or they're not strong enough or they're not Christian enough or they're not believing enough. They don't they don't have enough faith. Every lie that has been spoken over them about their past and even their present. I declare right now that those lies came from the father of lies. And I speak over every person, over every listener, that, that right now that you rebuke those lies and the Lord Jesus rebukes those lies, you are called. You are the ones who have been chosen to preach the kingdom, the good news, the good news of God's rule being here right now. Jesus is soon to return. And I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice makes the decision to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and to be a part of Matthew 24, 14 in spreading the good news of the kingdom into all the world. God bless you. 
I pray that this, uh, this series has helped you not only to be who God has called you to be, but to help others to be who God has called them to be. Now is the time, y'all. Jesus is soon to return. And I know our parents said it and their parents said it and their parents said it and probably their parents said it. And because so many bodies, so many parents have said it and great, great grandparents have said Jesus is soon to return. Then we are at a place right now where we're like, well, everybody said that. Is he really coming back? Is he really coming back? I don't know. But I'm here today to tell you Jesus is soon to return. And when he comes, he's going to come so quickly that there will not be time to get ready. There will not be time to all. Oh, I'm going to start doing God's purpose now. Make the decision right now today. Make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. And let's spread the gospel of the kingdom into all the world. God bless you. 